hope y'all can hear me well. Let me just fix the computer right. All right, on the screen. First off, I'm so, for, sorry. First off, I'm gonna start off by giving all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. The Heavenly Father name is Yahweh. All right, we are Hebrew Israelites. All right, um, let's say if the Bible, that's our biblical nationality. And I'm giving praises and honor and glory to the Lord, whose name is the Most High, whose name is Yahweh in the Hebrew tongue. Um, but Hashem just interprets the inner name. Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew tongue is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the Hebrew tongue, his name is Yahweh Shai. All right, by Hashem and in the name of the Holy Spirit. All right. Everything is biblical, all right, and everything is underneath God's hand, and there's the core to to of uh, this lesson I'm about to get into, all goes back to the Lord, all right. Now I'm going to give double honors to the apostles of GMS because those are our teachers who taught us this truth, all right, and broke down this knowledge and this understanding that we have that we see playing out in the last days all over the world, all right. So double honors to the apostles of GMS and salutations to the the laborers out there. Um, men, women, and children in the house of David, um, and Shalom to the Akim of the Shepherd of Berea camp. All right, I'm my name is Yalak Mara. And like I said, we 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 are we are the Hebrew Israelites. Okay, it's not a color thing. This is just who we are by nationality. We ain't black. All right, we ain't you know they called us colors and all of this stuff. We've been Hebrew Israelites since 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 the Lord put us here. So, um, yeah, I um I don't know if anybody have seen, you know. You go check, uh, this is a this is from Dave Chappelle. You know, yeah, I know Dave Chappelle. All right, and he had this um this um show um well stand up called Unforgiven, and in the stand up, right, he breaks out and speaks on and use different allegories and metaphors. But yeah, he's talking about and he he gets direct. He's talking about a contract. He's talking about contracts, contracts. All right. And inside of the contract, how will he label as the artist? Because that's what they call. They don't call you by your name. They call you the artist. All right. How you get screwed over on contracts because he said it's like a three card. Um, I forgot the terminology, but basically everybody's in on it. The person who's looking over your contract is in on it with the people who's writing the contract. And you're not reading the contract because... As he was stating, you're 28 years old, you've, you're broke, you're just looking for a way out. And you know the way out. So these conditions was, this whole thing is a, is a, is a table flipped around. So I want to get into the core of why this is happening. I, wanna sh I just want to go into the, uh, the history of why this is being done. Specifically, now it, ha it, can, it happens to everybody, but specifically... It mainly is going to happen to you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. For one, y'all Israelites. Two, um, this is this is the scenario, okay, that we're being put in. It, it, the, the tables pretty much have turned for a set period of time. What am I talking about? Well, I'm going to get it right here in Genesis. Now, before I get that, he mentioned something, and I would play it out. You know, I, I would play it if y'all don't. Y'all could just watch it, but I'm too, you know, this censored stuff, man. And I don't know, I don't know how this stuff works, and it might censor it or whatever the case may be. And I, I ain't got, you know, it, it just it slows down a lot of videos, man. I mean, <laughs> shout out to the devil doing his job because he's been slowing down a lot of videos. Can't even do screen recordings no more or, or, or walking goals. It's just been. It's been chaotic. Nevertheless, keep pushing forward. So um, he uses the word patuity because what they do in these contracts is they write such and such, okay, um, the artist, yada, 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 and then your name, they own your name because they'll use your name, but they own that, all right? And whatever work you do, and they said, uh, for something under the universe, perpetuity under under the universe. When you when you um watch it, he he, he says it out much clearer. I'm just trying to uh, play back from what I what I just seen. 
Now, when you go into the word perpetuity, it literally says a bond or other security with no fixed maturity date, meaning that it is no fixed date on this, like a set date on this thing. A restriction making an estate un inalienable perpetually or for a period beyond certain limits fixed by the law. So, I mean, this shit is just basically going to be done forever. Basically, if you, if, you know, when you look at this, uh, this word maturity, forever. So he's in a contract. You can sign a contract where you're stuck forever. Well, all the work you put in, your name, your ownership. Because he said, yeah, I thought about doing another uh, show called Dave Chappelle. But when I went to go do that, they own the name. So I can't even do a show or another show of my own with my own name because they own that. And as grimy as this is, and as it happens very often, I mean, I know you see uh, Javante Davis, this happens to fighters, right? It happens to, because these, these are contracts, artists, musicians, so on, you know, all different types of art. Nevertheless, the contract and everybody is in on it except you. See? Now, let's go to Genesis. And, it, you know, it was good to watch because he breaks it down from experience. You know, I'm just giving, like, little pieces that, that stuck, but... What I'm here to do through the Holy Spirit is to really take it back to the core of what this is all about. Yeah, Dave. So what this what this is all about, and, and honestly speaking, is really about Jacob and Esau. Now, who's Jacob and who's Esau? So the history of Jacob and Esau was that they were actual brothers, all right, in which they were separated. They were going to be two different men of people, all right? They were going to be two separate nations, but yet they were going to be close amongst each other. And inside of this world, there's two separate nations that are close amongst each other. Two different mannerisms, two different types of people, but yet we're the closest one together. And we technically are brothers, so to speak, because we had the same mother and father, which is Isaac and um, Rebecca. Okay? And so... The story of Jacob and Esau, Esau came out red, which would look like so-called whites. And Jacob came out as um, the so-called black, but he was smooth. He was uh, smooth skinned. He dwelt in tents. All right. Kind of like how do, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, so-called blacks or Latinos is, is now, you know, like the chill, some in the house. Right. So there's a character. They got had two different characteristics. Esau would like to go hunting. All right. Same thing so-called whites do. You know, I just don't like to go hunting. That's not our spirit to go hunting. You know, like, I've never been hunting before. And I'm not saying if you if you a, a person are, you know, that you, that automatically makes you that. But chances are that that's, that they, they, that's, in their, that's in their DNA to do that, to go hunting and shooting deers and shooting animals and shit like that. You, you know, that, that's, that, 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 you know. At the end of the day, I don't think any, you know, no Jake is doing that. But if you have went, I'm not saying I make you it. But anyway, let me stay the course. This is Genesis chapter 25, verse 31. It says, and Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Well, let me get some backstory on this. All right. So what's going on is. All right. Let's just get, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it from the, let's get it from the beginning. Let's get it from the beginning. Genesis chapter 25, 25 and 22. I'll start from 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, meaning she wasn't able to have kids. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Now, I want to I wanna sit right there. Just because you don't have or you lack or you are barren, pray to the Lord. A lot of things in Most High make you lack because he wants you to pray to him. And then... These miracles were performed. They didn't have to go see somebody or this, that, and the third. The Lord entreated and the Most High would open that womb up. The Lord is a miracle maker. And in all of our forefathers, as Sarah, she couldn't have kids, but then she ended up having Isaac. These are the Lord creates these scenarios, side note, all right, for us to entreat of him. You know, of him. Not of the so-called white men, not of the government, not of their ways. Now, 
it was under the curses we were set up that we got to go to them to get things, but then we get caught up in what? Contracts, taxes, contracts, and things of that nature. You entreated the Lord, okay, the Most High will bless you and open those things up. But verse 22, and the children struggled together within her, all right, because she, she was having twins. Now they were struggling inside of her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire to the Lord. Now, she prayed about this situation. Right? But that's what we would do in the ancient world. When if something was wrong, you would pray to God about it. That was the the, the thing to go to. It wouldn't you wouldn't hit Google. <laughs> you know, what is what is the two uh why is my stomach? No, you would inquire of the Lord. All right. You see how you know technology replaces replaces that because you go to Google, you go to doc, you know, you just take your it just don't even go back to the Heavenly Father, right? You know, not saying you can't use these things, but at the end of the day, prayer towards the Lord should be first. It says, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. So two nations was inside of her body. Now, when we talk about nations, we're talking about two nationalities, two different backgrounds. But they got the same father and the same mother. How could they be two different um nations? All right. Well. That's because before we deal with the flesh, we're dealing with the spirit. So when it's saying two different nations, there's two different there's two different spirits. All right? All right? Just because you are the same uh, flesh or whatever doesn't mean you're going to have that same, that same righteous spirit. All right? Now, this nation that was coming out was going to be, Jacob was going to be Israel. So Israel was a spirit, was a spiritual before, was actually physical. And Esau... Of, of, of the Edomite nation that was spiritual before was physical because technically they had the same mother and father right now it says and the one people shall be stronger and the other all right it says um and two men and people shall be separated from thy, thy bowels so they will have two different mannerisms all right and the people the one people shall be stronger than the other people now it's talking about like people that's multiple so this group of people is going to be stronger. Now, we know the ones who have the talent. We know that ones who have the bigger, their bodies is bigger. They're stronger. All right. We know that. All right. Because when you look at the NBA, when you look at the boxing, when you look at basically all the, all the sports, you, you know, so-called blacks or so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans dominate. And sometimes if it may happen to be a person who looked like a so-called white, nine times out of ten, they are still the seed of, of Jacob, you know, it's just the confusion of uh, the mixing and everything that went down th throughout the years. Now it says, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the other, the elder shall serve the younger. So at the end, the elder was going to serve the younger. Now the elder, you're going to see, became Esau. Verse 24, and when her days were to be delivered, uh, um, to deliver were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. So they were twins, all right? That's why she was going through what she was going through. But the twins was two separate nations. All right. It says, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. All right. And after that came his out, his brother, his hand took hold on Esau's heel. His name was called Jacob, in which that was a sign. Right. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. So Esau would now be the elder because he came out first. All right. And the boys grew, but it says the elder shall serve the younger. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. That was his mannerism. All right. A man of the field. Boys in the field, climbing mountains, discovering new animals. Wow. Crocodile Dundee. You know, shit like that. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Chilling inside. Now nah, I'm chilling today. I ain't going nowhere. I'm chilling. You know, you know, in the crib, chilling with his girl. You know, if Jacob do go out, they got that one mile radius. You know, that that that's Jake. You know, Jake got that one mile radius. They might find a nice little park they go to. Like I like to just go to the park or not too far, you know, where you get, get get fresh air or be among you know, see a little bit of nature, then come then come back in. Then you know, but that that's that's Jake. You'll have that 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 um you know, and then uh come back inside. Not to say that uh uh because the Lord one thing about Israel. Israel gained a lot of experience because the Most High forced us to move and travel around. 
all right? And when you read, when you read the, uh, the story of Jacob, you'll understand what I'm saying, right? But nevertheless, Esau is as you see on the TV. Who you see climbing in the middle of volcanoes and discovering shit like that, going deep inside of caves, all right? So that was it. That was, that's how they would be. It says, dwelling in tents, verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. So, you know, uh, Jacob, <laughs> as they are, they mama's boys, right? But Esau, the father loved Esau because, hey, Esau, even to this, now, hey, they're the ones who really uh, run the game of cooking them, them, them red meats, you know? So anyway, verse 29. And Jacob saw a pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint, hunting all day, running around, chasing animals and shit, right? And he was faint. He was tired, worn out. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. So Jacob just came out. He in the crib. He just had some red, red pottage, and Esau came, damn near on his last breath, smelt that pottage and seen it and said, Jacob, let me get that, you know? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm faint. I'm about to pass out. Therefore, was his name called Edom, which Edom means wasted away is he. All right. Now, verse 31. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. So when Jacob's mom was like, all right, you want this polish? Sell me a birthright. Now, I know it's been a little, you know, a little lengthy, but, you know, just got to get all the meat about this thing. But the thing that it brings back to is when you watch this, okay, when you watch this, and you can watch the show itself. I just watched this clip right here. When you watch what Dave Chappelle is saying about those who are being desperate, those who they uh, find that are that are desperate, young, twenty eight, they're broke, they don't got they um. This is they pretty much their way out. You see this similar story of how the scenarios uh we, we're put in. Now Esau was put in a scenario where he was running around, burnt out, and came back, and basically. Jacob's had the food, right? He was in a uh, um, pretty much a position of uh, having something that another person was 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 was, 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 uh, was begging for. All right, he was begging for it, right? Verse thirty-two, and Esau said, "Behold, I am at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright do to me?" So basically, signing a contract because that birthright was a contract. It wasn't written; it was verbal. But at the end of the day, it went through. It went into the heavens. Now, Dave Chappelle, you want to know what this is all about? It's really about this. Our forefather, your forefather, Jacob, have supplanted the shit out of Esau, okay, and getting his birthright because Esau was at the burnt out. He was at the end where he was worn out, burnt out with life, running around, chasing animals all day, didn't have no food. He have no energy in him to make anything. And here comes Jacob with this big juice, big red pottage, right? And and um and um that was his uh way to bargaining with him with the contract, which is a perpetuity, you know, what to say, indefinite. Well, the birthright was indefinite. It wasn't for a set point of time or just for our lifetime. It's forever. So that's why they do shit like that. All right, this is what it goes back to. Why else? Anybody else got any answers? The Quran, any other book got any answers to this? Because we, oh, oh, I mean, we're going, we're going into it. You can read it and look at it right here. But why Why with us? Why is it not happening with everybody else? Why? Well, why is this man such a true businessman, contracts and shit? Where does that come from? It comes from this right here. Anyway, it says that the prophet shall this birthright do to me. So he said, man, I, like, if I'm about to die, you know, this prophet, this this birthright ain't gonna mean shit. And just like with um young artists, all the new artists that come up, whether rap, whether mute, uh, whether uh acting and all all of the things, to them they sign a contract right away, because at the end of the day, we we at those same limits. We at the point where we where shit, man. We, we damn, I'm about to I'm about to die. I ain't got shit going on, you know. So this is the scenario that we're being put in now on the flip side. And this man knows this. And this man is given, when you read it, he was given the fatness of the earth. But the thing is, is our people are going to wake up and they're going to have more integrity, okay, 
and they're gonna they, they um they're gonna have more integrity, you know, and um ultimately because what this is really gonna go into is this future thing of what they're gonna bring out, all right, which is the MOTB. But before I jump there, I just wanna because that's gonna be the that's gonna be the major contract, all right, the MOTB, all right, you know that RFID chip when you put that inside of you. Which most people are not even going to know how that, uh, 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 you know, equates to what I'm saying. But it does by the scriptures, all right? And because this is the, the a number of a man. So he's, he's basically reclaiming ownership and um, the rights to you, all right? Because now you, you had the birth, you took his birthright, the rights to him. Now he wants the rights back to you. And that's how he's doing by the, by the way of that MOTB. But um, uh, verse 33 says, And Jacob says, Swear me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. Now, that bread and pottage of lentils was a morsel of meat. It wasn't much. Just as these contracts. You sign these contracts, and what do you get? You get a little bit of money. Wow, $1.5 million. Not much. Especially when that one point five million dollars, okay, they're gonna you you're gonna you're gonna blow through that real quick, and you're gonna need more money. But now they own the rights to your name. They can make oh uh, they 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 selling clothes. They making all types of stuff. You know they they the end the thing Dave Chappelle was saying. They don't gotta ask for permission, and he don't get any um rights or payments when they when they use his stuff because they own it. You sold it, so now they able to just constantly keep making money. But now you're not making any money because you took the 1.5 million and that's what that was in the contract. You know? Why they go so hard with it? Why you say they so ruthless with it? Because they're bitter in their spirit, even if most of them Edomites don't know. All right. They're bitter in their spirit because of this situation. And trust the elites do know. The elites is heavy into the Bible. They understand. That's why their agenda. For us is to always promote poison, always to promote, be looking negative. Why so much evil? Why this? Why that? If they're such good people, why are we the ones that gotta promote so much evil? If America's such a great country, why is on the forefront is so much negativity instead of promoting and pushing people, so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, as being scholars, dressing a certain way, being appropriate, being articulate, being very well educated. Of uh, being an inventor, being owners of things, you know, uh, uh, tilling the ground, knowing knowing how to use the earth, you know, raising kids and just showing that more of family structure, and that don't, that don't exist. All that promoted is broken homes, um, you know, just tattoos. I seen one mother with her son from Florida. He's a TikTok baby. She's been tattooing him since he was six months years old. And she gets money from it and things of that nature. Of course, you're going to get money from it. The devil's going to win at that because at the end of the day, and she don't know any better because she's just not going to know any better. But this is, anyway, not to get too far off track, not to get too far off track, all right? These, they, 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 they give you, going back to this pods and lentils, you get a little bit to eat from off of the contract. You talk about his birthright, perpetuity, forever, forever. So his kids, 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 kids will never have any birthright. Jacob owned that, owned the rights to it forever, eternally. Jacob's kids, kids, kids own the rights to that forever. In which Dave Chappelle, you are, would be a descendant of Jacob, you know, just by off of the seed, you know. Now, the elect is going to be a chosen amount who the Lord is really going to, de really dealing with, okay, in these last days. But... They know that, they at least know that, all right, at the end of the day. So they're going to go hard on Jacob and Jacob's great, 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 great grandchildren, right? And it says, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way and Esau despised his birthright, right? So that's what it goes back to, you know? <laughs> you know, um, now, not only was... The birthright took him. The blessing was taken. So what's the importance of the birthright? Okay. The birthright will usually go to the firstborn. All right. So 
meaning you would inherit all the things of the father because you was the firstborn. You would have the birthright. You would have the pretty much the be the successor of the father because you um you are the firstborn. Now it went to Esau, but I mean it says the eldest shall serve the younger, but he sold it. So now everything goes to Jacob. Now he's um uh, Isaac was on uh, by by on his on his death, you know, about to pass, going to the spirit realm. All right. And this is something else that happened. So this is Genesis 27 and 30. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. Well, let's go a little bit back on this. Because, you know, you want to, you, you kind of, in a sense, need to know where the anger, the hatred in, in, in it is built up off of. Now, the Lord set that up from the beginning to be a certain way. Because this is God's movie. All right. But in a spirit. All right, and them, them demons on them, it's they just is is an automatic hatred, and and you get you know y'all gotta notice <laughs> if if you was if someone was took you know if you got played like this, you are gonna be burnt too. And then this is like, hey, what, what what what's to live for now, right? So this is Genesis chapter twenty seven. So more or less, I say that in regards to knowing and understanding how much demonic things they're gonna they're gonna do, how much lying and, and see. Don't think, don't expect. Nothing to deal right in this society. Nothing to deal right in this society. When you understand this. This is Genesis chapter 27 and um, 19. And Jacob said unto his father, I am... Um, let's see. Uh, this is Genesis 27 and 5. Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his, his, his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt venison. All right, and to bring it. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat, that I may that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord, before my death. So he wanted to give him a blessing before the ears of the Lord, right? Before he dies. So he wanted to eat of a venison, savory meat. This is another, this is a, after that birthright was sold, this was another situation that happened. Verse 20, verse 8. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command. Meaning, um, you know, do as I say. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats. Now, Esau was about to go hunting for this stuff in the field. The mother, Rebecca, she loved her son, Jacob. She wanted Jacob to win. So she pulled for Jacob. You know, I did a lesson earlier to, so going into how actually actual heathens pulled for us and supported us in the time and our low moments, the most high put the spirit on them for us to win. All right. Um, hence the story of uh um how uh Cicero was 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 killed, uh, Jael, woman, um, she uh uh took a hammer and a nail and killed um Cicero and um went went into Ruth, went into Rahab the harlot, you see? Um but um it, uh, yeah the Lord will pull for you. Go now to the flocks and fetch me from thence two good two kids of the ghosts and I will make them savory meat for thy father such as he love loveth. Who's gonna know how the, um what the father loved now Esau had that you know, he had a certain touch with it that Jacob, I mean, that uh, Isaac loved. But one thing for sure, Rebecca knew that too. You think she ain't going to know that? Verse 10, and thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, that he may bless thee before his death. And she made it, right? <laughs> so she assisted, not only, all he had to do was bring it. He ain't even had to go, he ain't had to go hunt. He just had to go bring it in, right? And she was going to make it. Straight up. That's how much they was pulling. This dude had to go hunt for it, drag it in, skin it up, then uh cook it. <laughs> All Jacob had to do was go in the back, pull from the flock, and then um she was going she was going basically cook it up for him. <laughs> so the Lord going to pull for you if he wants you to win. At the end of the day, you may lack or oh, you know, he didn't have the uh the talent that Esau had. But at the end of the day, the Lord the Lord will make up for it. All right? Verse 10, and thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. 
Verse 11. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. So he was describing what? his Like how Esau would feel. Because at this time, the father was blind. So he was going to feel for actual Esau and see how he felt, right? Verse 12. It says, It's lock here. phone playing so lucky it says um and, and jacob said to rebecca his mother behold esau my brother is a hairy man and i'm a smooth man my father peradventure will fail me and i shall seem to him as a deceiver and i shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing and his mother said unto him upon me be thy curse so just as dave Chappelle said they're all in on it together well, guess what? The Lord was in on it. Jacob was in on it. And the mother was in on it. And you know what? <laughs> Isaac was in on it. <laughs> All right? It was just set up in the spirit to be that way. But how we're getting played now on this end, pretty much, it ain't nowhere how this dude got played. And I'm not saying that in the way of, 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 of having a, a, a feeling towards it. Because this is what's set up in the spirit. And he got what he got coming. And not only that, hey, this dude is the wicked ruling. When we rule, we're not even going to be ruling like how, they, how this guy's ruling. We had, this had to happen. Could you imagine them doing this? They're doing this to people. Could you imagine, you know, how much people, they've they, they done dirty in nations and relationships they messed up and think, and they still doing it. They still go at it. They still go at it. Perpetually. So this, 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 I mean, it was in his nature to be wicked. But anyway, it says... It says on verse 14, and he went and fetched and brought them to his mother and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. So who made it? The mother. They were like I said, like he said, uh, he mentioned, watch this, watch this, because he said they do like the three card Monty. Yeah, you see it, man. But y'all seen the guys who, who do the card and one dude is betting and playing on it and he's playing and he act like he won. And then there's a guy who's who's doing it. And it's like every like oh like this pe pretty much people is in on it. They all in on it, you know, just to gather you to come to it. And then when you join, they end up they end up playing you, you know. But they all working together just to get your money. But you don't know that they all working together. And that's the situation. What was happening here with um with um Esau and Jacob? All right, everything was being pulled for Jacob to win. And this is where, man, this is where it all, because now he's able to read it. He's able to see it on the back end. He's able to really see, oh, my mother was against. He didn't know that during this time. Now he's able to see it on the back end. Shit, my mother was against. What the fuck? The Lord was against. Me? Oh, my gosh. So that's why he pushes Satanism, this poison. I mean, he, 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 he just sees that. Oh, shit. Damn. I was, I was, I was effed from the get-go. And truly so. That's what it, that's what it was. But, you know, you went there even further by pursuing your brother and doing, you know, uh, totally go, um, going all out. You know, instead, hey, you lost, you lost. It is what it is. Right. But it says. Um, verse uh, 14, and he went and fetched and brought them um, on verse 15. And Rebecca took goodly raiment of her, of her eldest son. That is talking about clothes. Right. Which were with her in her house and put them upon Jacob, her youngest son. So now he's supplanting. He's putting on clothes, taking his what? Identity, the same way they take your name, your identity, and make money off of it. Now he's going to make money. He's making money off of Esau, off of his identity, okay, so to speak, to get that blessing. You see what's going on here? So this stuff was going on in the, in the back and in the spirit realm. This was going on, and they, this is what's being played out now in these days with different artists that you see get signed and going to this and going to these realms. and. They uh they getting uh, screwed over by these contracts, and then it might not be just a so called white person. It'll be a so called black person as the face. You think he's cool, so your guard is down. Cause now you know just as the mother was in on it, now I could get your own to be in on it. But we still gonna play you, you know. And then that artist, that person who's playing you, he's gonna get a little little shit out of it. He ain't getting much, you know. But this is the games that's been going on for a long time. So when he said it inside of this uh. This thing right here, 
you know, yeah, it was like a big smack in the face because one thing that they said, he said, HBO said, they never said no to him. They never said yes when he pitched to them his show. They just said, what, uh, what can we use you for? You know? So, it says, uh, going back to verse 17, 16, it says, and she put the skins of the kids, the skins of the kids upon his hands and upon the, uh, the upon the smooth of his neck. So she she put on um the skins of the kids, kids, uh, of the kids of the goats. That's what it is, all right? Not like actual children. The kids will be uh like baby goats, the kids of the goats upon his hands. So because Esau was hairy, all right. Esau was hairy. Around his neck, he was hairy. Right, verse 17. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And see, so why would Jacob why would Isaac Isaac would know his 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 uh his his uh son's voice? He would be able to tell the smell, the the the, the you know how he walk in, just the presence, of, and then especially by speech, right? Because uh, you know, was pretty much his vision was was bad, right? But he said, "Who art thou, my son?" Because this kind of was a little more like, "Oh, I, I know this ain't Esau." And Jacob said unto his father, "I am Esau, thy firstborn." All right, so which he lied. Okay, I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. Verse. 20 and Isaac said unto his son how is it that thou hast found it so quickly my son so you don't think Isaac is like he's playing him like it gotta be first of all you sound different right second of all you that that you I just I just said this I know I know you for years so I know how long it take you to go hunting you know, you, you get into that hunting mode, you rolling around and shit. You you know, he knows. Then you gotta come back, you gotta skin it, you gotta cook it. Anyway, that's what Jacob said. And Jacob's um and Jacob said uh, he said, um and he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. <laughs> that which is true. And Isaac uh said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may fill thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. So you don't think that's unusual? How would Jacob know about it? So of course some things was ticking with Isaac. How would Jacob know about this situation? All right, if he just said it to Esau, right? Because Jacob didn't hear it. The mother told him. If he just said it to Esau, all right, and he sent them out, and he sent them all the way out there. Uh, you know, hey man, we caught Monty. <laughs> Isaac had to be in on this. I mean, definitely was. All right. Whether very intentional or through the Holy Spirit, he was in on it. Maybe he sent them out. He's just like, yo, go. And he told he told them, but it, it doesn't say that. So I don't want to add to the story. You know, it doesn't say that in the side of the scripture because it, it would have said it. So Salaki, I don't want to add to the add to the scriptures. But um, he was in on it through the Holy Spirit. All right. And it says, um, verse 22. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice. So like I said, you think he don't know the voice tone? Because, you know, Jake got a certain voice. That, you know, Jake got a certain voice. When I mean Jake, so-called blacks, I tell them, you got, you got, they got a certain voice. And then Esau, so-called white, they got, they got a certain voice. And it, the tones is totally different. It says, but the hands are the hands of Esau. You're like, the voice is Jacob, but the hands is Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were, were hairy. As his brother's Esau hands. So he blessed him. So the script to say that he didn't discern. He didn't, you know, he really thought he was Esau. All right. And he said, but like I said, through the Holy Spirit, through the through the Holy Spirit, he was in on it. Okay. Whether he wanted to fit, really be into it or not, but it, it, it just was. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And, and he said, Bring it near to me. And I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near, 
now and kiss me, my son. Verse 27. And he came near and kissed them, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed them and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field in which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. It's funny when he's blessing him, he didn't say, may the Lord give Esau this. He just said, may he give you this. You understand what I'm saying? Because it wasn't a direct to Esau's name because it could have been because it's technically supposed to be him. But it was set up in the spirit where it was going directly to Jacob. Esau's name was no longer being used at, the, at these moments for the blessing. Let people serve thee. He didn't say let people serve Esau or Edom. And nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curseth thee and blesseth be he that blesseth thee. Now, you might say, well, why we don't got this if this is our lineage? We ain't got that right now. It's set up to come, but we ain't got that right now because it's going to happen in the kingdom when the Lord returns. And writes says, this thing is a long process, but to save the best for last, man. We're going to get it soon. But nevertheless, this is the thing that they're mad and jealous over. So when you go into this, once again, I know, you know it was a process. But we going into true history about a situation of why things are like this, you know. So you you will want to get the root of this whole uh, understanding behind it. And the Lord did it. You might say, you know, well, dang. So I mean, why well, why was it done to him? Well, the Most High made it this way because this is how the movie was going to be set, you know. And if you feel like, hey, that was unfair. Well, guess what? He's getting back at it right now. So I guess, hey, do you do you, did you like that, Dave Chappelle? Did any of you artists like that? <laughs> no. You know, and at the end of the day, now you got to do stuff wicked to get the little crumbs. Jacob ain't telling him, yo, yeah, let me see you, uh, you know, go lick a horse's ass. He didn't tell him to do no wild shit. You know, you got to look this horse's ass. You got to do this or you got to do some, do something crazy. That's what they're doing. That's what making with Jacob just say, hey, sell it to you. I have to sell it. Jacob didn't force him. All right. And hey, he got a chance, an opportunity. To come up, hey, you know, hey, they get opportunities. They, hey, you know how much words or inside trading they hear every day, you know, and, and, and we we be the last ones to find out, you know. Oh yeah, we doing this. Oh okay. Oh damn, we late late to this. We late to that. We late to this. We late to that. And then you get the court. You get hit with the courses. Take my course. Yeah, come to my event. Come over here. Come here. Oh, oh, you know, <laughs> you being ran around like a damn, like a nut. You just being ran. <laughs> You know, it's funny because, this, hey, this happens. It's half of the brothers, you know, you, you experience it. You know, you, you do this, you do that. You be like, damn. You know, but at the end of the day, the most high is going to bless us in the back end. So regardless, you know, Esau can have it, you know, run circles and run around for us to get a crumb, a little more so beat. You know what I'm saying? But the Lord going to bless us regardless. Don't got to be on this time around. As long as we in this truth, you know, and, and you know, the Lord give us daily bread, you know, hey, it's, 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 everything's going to be all right, man. You know, because we're going to get we're going to get a, a greater blessing on the back end, you know, and which is truly promised. And we believe that is that that's literally is going to happen, you know, and that comes with faith. Cause somebody say, well, how you know this? That comes with faith. Well, you know, you just got to wait and see. Right. So um, this is uh, Genesis 27 and um, uh, 28. And it says and he came and kisses it. Verse 28, therefore God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine, right? The fatness of the earth is everything that comes out of it. So do we own the diamonds? and the, No, but there's a blessing for Jacob to get all that. And Jacob never got that when you read the story of Jacob itself. So when is he going to get it? He's going to get it in the back end as a nation, his people is going to get it, right? Um, so verse 30, it says, and it came to pass as soon as Jake, Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, Jacob was yet scarce going out from the presence of Isaac, his father, man. He just probably peeled up out of it. He got that blessing, you know, things that, Shalom, and it just dipped out, right? And it says um, that Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. So Esau came, and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, let my father arise. So Esau came, let my father arise, arise, arise. <laughs> 
and eat of his son's venison. <laughs> Today is my blessing. <laughs> You know, I mean, hey, man, he got burnt, but hey, that shit, you know. But, I, I, hey, I get, we see, this is the point to understand where all the root of bitterness and all these contracts and, and, and violations and all these codes and things that's inside of it, how they own your name and fortuity. Oh, you know, this came from this. Because this blessing was forever. The birthright, ever. It says that, they, that thy soul may be may bless me. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am Esau, thy firstborn. <laughs> thy firstborn, Esau. I'm thy son. It's like thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that I have taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest, have, and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. He didn't say, Oh, you know, I'm going to put some curses on him. He just said, yay, he going to be blessed. So and now, he's not, and, oh, that was dick. Hey, man, he going to be blessed. <laughs> Verse 34, and when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. So he weeped with tears. He cried about this matter. So now what was going to happen was, you're going to see, and this is where all of this comes into play, man. And he said unto his father, bless me, even me also, my, oh, my father. And he said, thy brother came with subtility and have taken away thy blessing. And he said, is he rightly not named Jacob? Because Jacob means supplant. For he have supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. No, you sold your birthright technically, right? And behold, now he taken away my blessing. And he said, has thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, behold, I have made him thy Lord. And all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn, and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the, of the dew of heaven from above, in which they are in control currently firsthand. They do have the fatness of the earth. That's why they have soldiers all throughout this motherfucking uh, world, because they're basically guarding all the resources. All right? They put people in, put people in slavery. They, they, they own everything, right? Verse 40, And by thy sword thou shalt live. So, one thing Dave Chappelle and all these people and everybody know is that everybody out here respects the killer. And that's where his power stands. That not because it's a contract, but that contract is backed by bullets, weapons of mass destruction. And not only that, he also just, it's not just because a sword don't got to be uh, the bullets, but also he was given the power to what? defamation of character because he also said that they said oh man he smoked crack he said at that time i was a muslim i was a devout muslim i wasn't smoking anything what guess what because he got the the sword once again because words can cut you too hebrews 4 and 12 right he has the power over the media to make you seem like you're crazy he can make you seem like you're a pedophile he can make you seem like you're a, a you rape somebody he can make you seem like he can do anything he want with that media and people will believe it, and then you will be blacklisted and pretty much hunted down by people. And, you know, you know he's turning people's minds into a sword, a, you know, an instrument against you. And that's how easy it is for him to do it. Because whatever he puts out there, people are going to automatic believe. All right? Hence all the people who got jabbed up. But they got jabbed up and still caught the motherfucking thing that's, that they were supposed to be safe from. Makes no damn sense. But anyway, I want to continue on. It says, it says, and by thy sword thou shalt live and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the, the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. All right? And that's what it, what it was a period of time where Esau was down and uh, the, the, it was broken from off his neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father. See, he hated Jacob. Perpetual hated. All right? Um, perpetuity, <laughs> because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him, and Esau said in his heart, "The days of my mourning for my father are at hand, 
then will I slay my brother Jacob. So the descendants of him and everything. So this is why, you know, pretty much going into this, you know, this was done. Now, I'm going to say all praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekaka Dush. But I am going to play this video now. And, I'm, you know, I'm going to play a little clip of it now. And um, pretty much, yeah, I'm just ending it off. I'm doing it this way just in case I got to just edit it and cut it out. So I'm going to just play this, but shalom. Why aren't you the landlord? Yes, you. Why aren't you the landlord? Every day you go. Without further ado, man, let's hop right into this video and let's let's hear Dave Chappelle's first hand experience of the industry, bro. You know why? Prince. Do you know why? Prince. The famous rock star that was a friend of mine. Do you know why he called himself the artist when he came back? calls himself the artist because that's what they call us in our contracts. Oh, these contracts are crazy. You should hear the terminology they say in these contracts. To use your name and likeness and perpetuity throughout the universe. Who the fuck could possibly know what that means? They laugh no, but it's I, not funny. It's so complicated, <laughs> it's in funny. fact. That when you're a kid like me, you have to hire somebody to tell you what that means. And you sit down at a table and you do the contract game. And that's how I got with Comedy Central. I signed the contract. And I signed the contract the way the 28-year-old expecting father that was broke signs a contract. I was desperate. I needed a way out. And it wasn't good money and it wasn't good circumstances, but uh, what? And, and I'm glad that he said that part because this is something that I try to tell you guys all the time. I want you to pay attention that whenever an up and coming artist gets signed to a record label, they're usually always coming from the hood because they know that people who are desperate for dollar will do anything in order to achieve it. They know that if they take somebody who was living in a very, very unfortunate circumstance and give them a dollar amount, you're going to get an advance for $1.5 million. Every individual who had no money would sign so they can have that $1.5 million. Literally, you know, they're signing a contract that literally gives these management companies the right to do whatever with their name, whenever they want, force that artist to do whatever that it is, whatever agenda they need to push. That's why there are so many industry plans. I want you to tell me right now, how many people do you know in the industry were already rich and famous before coming to the industry? How many people do you know in the industry were already rich, bro, already had money? before coming to the industry. A lot of these people in the hip hop community, a lot of people, these people in the R&B and even pop culture, they didn't really have much starting out. They really didn't. And that's why people like Dave Chappelle, he just explained, they signed under desperate conditions because of the life that they were living prior. But let's continue. What else am I gonna do, I said. And all these white people sitting at that table told me, trust this Dave, it's a good contract. And I looked around the table and they all seemed to agree it was a good contract. But what if, what if it was like that game of three card Monty? What if they were all friends and I didn't know it? Bag of money. Was Iceberg's money in the first place? What was I talking about? What was I trying to tell you? Last week, two weeks ago, whenever it was, I call Lauren Michaels and I tell him, okay, I'll do it. I'll do Saturday Night Live on election night. And, and the day I made that phone call, the day I committed to it, it gets announced that Netflix is streaming Chappelle show. Not just Netflix. HBO Max is streaming it too. Tell you another story about HBO. No, hear me out. Did you know before Chappelle show was at Comedy Central, I pitched that show to HBO. I I told them what I wanted to do. Now these are executives. 
All they have to do is say, yeah, we'll take it, or no, thank you, we won't. But they didn't say either of those things. They went too far. They said, literally, what do we need you for? That's what they told me. They said, kick me out of the office. What do we need you for? And here we are, all these years later, and they're streaming the very show that I was pitching to them. So I'm asking them, what do you need me for? People think I made a lot of money for Chappelle's show. When I left that show, I never got paid. They didn't have to pay me because I signed the contract. But is that right? I found out that these people were streaming my work and they never had to ask me or they never had to tell me. Perfectly legal because I signed the contract. But is that right? I didn't think so either. They literally own these artists, bro. That's why I like working for Netflix. I like working for Netflix because when all those bad things happen to me, that company didn't even exist. And when I found out they were streaming Chappelle's show, I was furious. How could they not? How could they not know? So you know what I did? I called them and I told them that this makes me feel bad. And you want to know what they did? They agreed that they would take it off their platform just so I could feel better. That's why I fuck with Netflix. Because they paid me my money, they do what they say they're going to do, and they went above and beyond what you could expect from a businessman. They did something just because they thought that I might think that they were wrong. And I I do. I think if, if you are fucking streaming that show, you're fencing stolen goods. They stole that from me. They just took it. And I'm not up here trying to tell you guys that I believe that Comedy Central gave me a raw deal just because I'm black. I believe that they gave me a raw deal because this fucking industry is a monster. It's the same monster that these Me Too bitches was trying to tell you about. But they hate the monster for how it fucks. And I- Can these Tesla solar panels give you free electricity for life? Did you know that you could get... And I hate that monster for how it eats. But my God, man, it's the same monster. When I quit the show, all my friends would say, well, then fuck them, Dave. Why don't you just do Chappelle's show at another network? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why doesn't a slave run from one plantation to another plantation? Because the master over there might be nicer. <laughs> my God, man, I was trapped. You know what? Tell you the truth. Tell you the truth. I've even thought about coming back and doing another Chappelle show. Well, but if I do, I can't call it Chappelle's show because my name and likeness is being used by them in perpetuity throughout the universe. It's in the contract. That shit is crazy, bro. He can't even start a show with his own name because they hold the name his name and likeness under the contract for perpetuity basically means forever until whenever that 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 contract ends or whenever perpetuity is you know what i'm saying they own him they own every part of him he can't even start his own shit with his own name that's crazy bro i You're not supposed to do this in my business. I'm up here doing something that nobody else in this business has the balls to do. I'm telling you something that you need to know. I'm trying to explain to you what you're seeing. You don't understand what you're seeing. I am publicly flogging a network. And I know that this network, niggas, they they watching me and they saying, 
why, 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 why are you doing this so, so publicly? Then feel good to be flogged publicly. Oh, believe me, I know. I know exactly how that feels. When I quit my show, they said I was crazy. Who was crazy about it? I just didn't want to do it anymore. They said I smoked crack. That's impossible. I was a devout Muslim. I didn't smoke or drink. But I do now, bitch, because you ruined my fucking life. <laughs> it's fucked up. Now it's their turn. This is their first nigga lesson. And I'm honored to give it to them. They're going to pay me for this show. I called my agent. I said, is there anything I can do about this show? And he said, no. Well, fuck you do that. You want something done right? I guess you got to do it yourself. So I'm not going to the agents. I'm coming to my real boss. I'm coming to you. I'm begging you. If you ever liked me, if you ever think there was anything worthwhile about me, I'm begging you. Please don't watch that show. I'm not asking to boycott any network. Boycott me. Boycott Chappelle's show. Do not watch it unless they pay me. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Y'all heard it, man. And um, a lot of things I was saying or oh, missed out on, you know, it, it was filled in. But uh, once again, I'll just say Shalom. Call all y'all by Shalom.